If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before moving on. We know that the magnetic field produced at point P and also at the point midway between the wires is produced by current carrying wires. So we need to look at the formula for the magnetic field produced by wires that carry current. So that magnetic field is equal to a constant multiplied by the amount of current flowing through the wire divided by 2 pi times a particular distance. Now we have two wires labeled I1 and I2, so we're going to have to use this formula twice. Notice we're setting up the equation twice using subscripts of 1 for the first wire and 2 for the second wire. But before we begin to plug in all the known values into the formulas, we actually need to figure out the directions of these magnetic fields, and that often becomes a challenging part of these questions. And to figure out the direction, we have to follow what is called the right hand rule. And in this rule, we curl our hand around the wire as if we were holding the wire. Our fingers will be pointing in the direction of the magnetic field, and our thumb will point in the direction of the current. Now, we'll notice that the currents in both wire 1 and wire 2 have this little purple dot to represent them. That dot means that the current is coming out of the page. And that is true for both wires, again. Now we're going to try to draw the right hand rule as it applies to part A. Remember in part A, we're trying to calculate the magnetic field at a point midway between the wires. So that would be located right here. We could put a little X there to mark the spot, so to speak. And we're gonna try to use right hand rule. Now I will be the first to admit that my art skills are incredibly lacking, but hopefully this drawing makes some sense. We're trying to show the right hand gripping wire one. Our thumb should be pointing out of the plane of the computer screen. It should be almost pointing towards you. We'll notice in that orientation that our fingers would be pointing straight up at that point we had marked with an X. That means the magnetic field will be pointing up. So we can conclude that B1, which is the magnetic field produced by wire one, is pointing in the upward direction. Now over to wire two, when we grip it with our right hand, again the drawing's not that great, but hopefully we can see that our fingers would curl their way downward, and at that point that we marked with X, that would mean that the magnetic field produced by wire two would also be pointing downward. Now, since they point in opposite directions, we have to assign them opposite signs. We can arbitrarily call the upward direction positive, so that means B1 will be positive. We'll call the downward direction negative, and that makes B2 negative. That means the total magnetic field will be B1 minus B2. Now, let's note something about the R, and that is the distance from the wire to the point that we marked. Well, the question noted that the distance D is 0.2 meters, or 20 centimeters, that means from the one wire to the point that we marked, it's just half of that. So that's going to end up being 0.1 meters. And then this distance here is also half of the D. So that'll be 0.1 meters. So that means these distances, these R values are the same. That means we can drop the subscripts. And then we'll notice that both terms contain mu over 2 pi R. We see one there, and then we see one here. So we can factor it out. And now we have the equation in its most simplified form. We're just going to plug in the known values for I1, I2. We will see that mu is a constant, and then R, again, is 0.1 meters. And when we calculate this, we can see we get a value of approximately negative 4 times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla, which is actually equivalent to negative 4 micro Tesla, if the question wants you to put it into micro. Now, the fact that it's negative means that overall, the magnetic field at this point is pointing downward. So we can express our answer in the following way. 4 micro Tesla towards the bottom of the page. And that would complete part A of the question. We will next attempt to calculate the magnetic field at point P. And we're first going to want to use the right hand rule to determine the directions of the two magnetic fields. So we've attempted to draw a right hand gripping wire two. Notice that the thumb is pointing out of the plane of the screen, since that's the direction of current I2. Our fingers curl around, and at point P, we can see that our fingers would be pointing exactly to the left. So that means that the magnetic field produced by wire two, we can call it B2 of course, is pointing to the left. So we've got that. Now we have wrapped the right hand around wire number one, and we're going to see, and this is a little tricky to draw, but we're going to see that the magnetic field produced by wire one is pointing in the direction of our fingers, which is kind of going off in this direction here. Now, I must admit that it's 
somewhat challenging to see this, but this angle right here is going to be exactly 45 degrees. If it helps, you can imagine wire one being at the center of a circle and the magnetic field would actually be represented by that circle. And we can see that at this point, the magnetic field would point off in a 45 degree angle. I'm not quite sure if that clarifies, but indeed that 45 degree angle is present. Which means that B1 can be broken up into an X component that points to the left and a Y component that points straight up. We can see the X component is adjacent to the 45 degree angle, so that means that that X component is going to be B1 times the cosine of 45 degrees. The Y component is opposite to the 45 degree angle, so as it points up, its value will be B1 times the sine of 45 degrees. So we can sort of organize this into a table. We've got two X components, B2, which is pointing to the left, and B1 cos 45, and then a single Y component, which points up and has a value of B1 sine 45. Now we need to replace these B2s and B1s with the correct expression for the magnetic field. Notice we're using a subscript of two to represent the values of the magnetic field produced by wire two, and then subscripts of one for the values produced by wire one. Now, the R, remember, is the distance from the wire to the magnetic field, so we can see from the diagram that R2 would be this distance here, that was simply the distance D. R1 is the distance from wire one to this point P, where the magnetic field lines are. We can see that that's the hypotenuse of this right triangle. Now, both sides of the right triangle happen to be D, and that means that the hypotenuse is D radical two. That comes from a special 45, 45, 90 right triangle. If you have any questions about that, please let me know in the comments. So uh, we can plug D radical two in for R1, the distance from wire one to point P, and then just D for R2. And then finally, at this point, we can plug in all the known values for I2, I1, and D. So we have all the known values plugged in. Might wanna pause the screen, make sure all the numbers are in the right spot. We can go ahead and compute all three of these quantities. We obtain the following results. Notice they all came out as times 10 to the minus sixth. So we can actually call every one of them a micro Tesla. So we'll change that as follows. So all we did right there is replace the times 10 to the minus six Tesla with micro Tesla. It's just easier that way. Notice that both X components point to the left. So we can add them together to make six and a half micro Tesla. And now we can take the X and the Y component of the resulting magnetic field and construct a right triangle. So notice that from starting here, the total Y component of 1.5 micro Tesla points up, the total X component points to the left and is 6.5 micro Tesla, and then the resultant is what we have to find using Pythagorean theorem. We're also gonna find this angle using the inverse tangent. So we've shown the work right here. You probably wanna pause the video and just make sure these last steps make sense. But 6.67 micro Tesla becomes the total resultant magnetic field at point P, and the angle becomes 77 degrees. So we could express the final answer as 6.67 micro Tesla at 77 degrees to the left of the vertical. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen.